support. The Mechpocalypse is here, baby. Patriot exosuits delivering freedom, justice, and security across the galaxy, and I am happy to report the wait was very much worth it. This thing absolutely shreds the right-hand rotary cannon and built-in missile pods, can clear bug holes, charger spam, hordes of enemies all in really short order, and we'll be showing off a ton of gameplay with it in this video. While that stuff plays in the background for now, I do want to talk briefly about all the drama that landed immediately after the patch. A lot went down there, the patch itself, my general sentiments around Helldivers, game balance, and where it currently stands, where I'd like it to go in the future. Please keep in mind, overall having a ton of fun with the game, it's super fun and deserves lots of praise, but we're going to focus on critique here for the moment. If you don't know, there was a bunch of backlash from the Helldivers community after the armor and weapon balance update a few days ago, where people were rightfully annoyed that Railgun, Breaker, and Shield got nerfed. There was a big stink on the official Discord and Reddit, some legitimate critique that made for good discussion, but generally lots of low effort screeching with little understanding of game balance or nuance in any way, shape, or form, which is not really a big surprise. When we're talking a title that has attracted so many players seemingly out of nowhere, there were like 450,000 people on not too long ago and 350 on when the mechs came today, so the game is popping off right now. It's got a huge player base and that's the Fortnite effect, with all the immaturity, rage, and bad takes that come with it. So, as you can imagine, there was a lot of nastiness. Few of the devs and moderators got in their feelings and kind of took it personally, got into a pissing match with the player base, and had some poor advice, like, just use your stratagems, bro. Like, that would somehow solve the issue of 15 chargers and titans all pancaking your ass simultaneously, while a bunch of modifiers in the game actively double or triple the time required to call in and use your kit. Can't very well use my strats if they're on cooldown for 10 minutes now, can I? When it came to the Discord drama, nobody came out looking very good, not the devs and certainly not the player base, but in fairness to the community, I do agree, I don't think it was a very good patch. I'm absolutely not one of those people who believes there should never be nerfs, only buffs in single player games, because that is how you make power creep a really big problem, that is how you trivialize the core gameplay loop, that is how you water down and make a game boring in the long run. When there's no longer any challenge or thinking or sacrifices required, you're just an unkillable superhero who glances at something and it explodes. That can be fun for a moment, but it gets old and fast. But the fact that Arrowhead felt the need to hit the railgun and breaker before addressing the main issues, like 7 through 9 difficulty bugs being an absolute slog, and infinite breach kite fest with obscene amounts of armor, charger and bile titan spam with very little player agency that allows players to address or avoid that loop in engaging ways was kind of lame. I can beat Impossible and Helldive no problem, especially with my main squad. Done it many times in the past, will do it many times in the future. But I don't actually think a Difficulty 9 bugs is fun. In fact, I find it rather unpleasant to play, which is why, for the moment anyway, if you see me playing bugs, it's probably only going to be on 6 or 7 difficulty. Because unlike with automatons, where there is a lot of room for skill expression and different playstyles, stealth and sneaking and a variety of weapons being viable, it feels to me like 9 bugs generally plays out the same way every time, devolving into this permanent kite fest where all you do is run from the 10 chargers and 5 bile titans constantly on your ass, and that's how I felt since I started playing it. And then you inevitably kite yourself into more spawn patrols, who spawn their own bug breaches on and on for 40 minutes straight as you sprint around the map in light armor, because God knows heavy armor is still ass. And one of the only ways to clear that in a reasonable manner, all that armor spam, was to breaker, railgun, and shield. Slightly overperforming for sure, 
but almost necessary on Helldive Terminids because the spear can't lock on properly and still doesn't one shot. The recoilless rifle takes forever to reload and you can't tandem reload with a partner when you're being chased by five chargers. All that armor is designed to split your team up so you can't really work together all that well. The EAT is great for like one or two chargers but you will never get to your call down when the chips are down and you're being chased and it's only two shots anyway. So again, how is that helpful when there's 15 plus heavily armored things all running at you? Well, the arc thrower is actually really good at anti-armor it's really only true when you have multiple people running it, focusing down targets and communicating with each other, because friendly fire can be a massive issue as it jumps through stuff and Palpatine lightning zaps a dude 50 feet to the left out of nowhere and you kill your friend. It's not so good when you're the only one running it either. It's like 10 or 12 shots to the head on a charger to kill it. That gets cut down a lot if you've got two, three, four arc throwers all working simultaneously. So yeah, chargers in general. Just a jank-ass enemy right now that, in my opinion, isn't very fun to fight, especially in large numbers. And really the major issue I have with them is that they hardcore railroad your playstyle and build to force you to deal with them and only them. Their animations are kind of whack. They sometimes turn on a dime and ignore the concept of momentum entirely. Their HP pools localized to separate body parts. And their butthole, which should be a weak spot. I mean, it's glowing yellow for God's sakes is literally the worst place on their body to shoot them. Most weapons straight up can't hurt them in any meaningful way, and in fact, one of the only reliable ways to do so is a straight up glitch. A lot of you might have seen that auto cannon tech where you let the charger run by you, and then you shoot it in the back leg armor twice and it just straight up dies. Yeah, that still works, but that's not intended. So essentially what happens is it goes into a charge stun animation and then lowers the armor and makes it a weak point on their back legs, but that's not intended. Confirmed by the devs, not supposed to work that way, that will get patched out. So they're supposed to be even tankier than what we've seen up to this point, which is not great game balance from my perspective when there's this ubiquitous enemy type that can't be scratched by 90% of weapons in the game anywhere on their body. So the fact that they wanted to address the railgun, which, okay, it was super meta, but not address the core reason for why that was the meta in the first place, that's kind of annoying. And I'm saying that as someone who doesn't really run the railgun very often at all. I don't personally like the weapon all that much. So when it comes to chargers, basically their spawn rates combined with their current jank just makes them unfun to play when you're on 7, 8, 9 difficulty. So I'd rather play 5 or 6 because you get a better, more diverse selection of enemies there. And generally speaking, I believe that the hardest difficulties shouldn't revolve solely around armor spam, but instead incorporate more trash mobs, bigger swarms, and more unique enemies like stalkers, who are deadly and interesting to fight, but don't rely on impenetrable armor. They can be killed by your bog standard pistol or assault rifle. If I spend the time clearing every heavy nest on the map, medium nest on the map, all the objectives, I shouldn't be punished at the end when I'm trying to leave the planet with even more spawns. I actively took out where they're spawning from, should probably be able to escape the planet easier in that situation. Now, I don't know all the enemies that existed in Helldivers 1, but there's a lot of room to experiment with stuff like the Glyphids from Deep Rock Galactic, or, hell, Starship Troopers, duh, tons of inspiration taken from there, Tyranids, whatever source you want, where we could get more bug diversity for additional challenge and terror, but in a fun and engaging way. One that doesn't railroad our builds and strategies completely around that one unit. Flying enemies and grabbers that try to smoker you back to their holes, then send up a shower of gore and limbs up if they manage to pull you back to their nest. That kind of stuff would be super cool. I also don't like how patrols currently function for the Terminants, because they'll spawn out of thin air, seen it happen multiple times, with bots too, but essentially with the bugs especially, they'll just kind of wall hack. They actively cheat, patrol, and constantly path exactly to where you are, even when you're in stealth armor and they shouldn't know you're there. It's like they're playing hide and seek with a five-year-old. Oh, can't see you. Where did he go, George? Where did he go? Meanwhile, they're just sidestepping directly towards your hiding place for no apparent reason. That is not fun. And again, that's much less of an issue with bots where stealth gameplay and different builds well and truly work even on eight and nine. The only thing really hardcore railroaded against the bots in my opinion is that you need to bring a shield. But then again, the shield is also kind of meta for bugs as well. So it is what it is. Anything that prevents contact effects from hitting you and save you from being one shot is of course going to be extremely good. The only way to make that not a part of the meta is probably just to nerf it into uselessness and I don't think anybody needs or wants to see that. 
So with all that stuff about armor, apparently feedback has been heard and Arrowhead will be addressing those issues soon, which I'm really thankful for, but I think it is going to be an incremental process. I don't think the balance is gonna be perfect anytime soon. My ultimate thoughts on that, it was a mistake to release a patch nerfing guns before addressing how bad nine feels to play. Once that core element is fixed, then you can go in and fine tune certain weapons, bring some up, bring some down, make it more interesting in that way. And the armor fix, well, it didn't do much of anything. Heavy armor still feels awful. It isn't tanky at all. You can still get two crit headshotted and basically die to little scavenger bugs. And the benefits you get are really minimal compared to the speed and maneuverability light armor affords. I will say I do appreciate the flamethrower and laser cannon changes. They're a lot of fun to use now. And I have some cool builds to show that focus on pyromania and pure laser gameplay, but I'd really love to rock a full EOD suit and yeah, I'll be slow. Yeah, my stamina will be worse, but I wanna be able to tank stuff like a dev rocket to the face, get up and kind of shrug it off. And right now that's simply not how armor is balanced. It's not how it works. There needs to be more tweaks on top of that. So final thoughts on the Discord drama and how I saw it all play out. Number one, if you're a complete dickhead out of nowhere, whether that be on YouTube or on the internet, in real life or to a dev on Discord, and they respond in kind, that is on you. I have zero sympathy for people who start out being an ass out of nowhere, get a bit of shade thrown back their way, and then suddenly cry victim because the big meanie devs are bullying them, right? Don't dish it out if you can't take it. That is bitch made behavior and it is super common, especially when nerfs happen to your precious games. The devs did not kill your dog, they did not bang your wife, they did not steal your money, and change some numbers on a gun. You don't have to be happy with the change, but you can definitely control how you articulate that displeasure. On the flip side, yes, we should absolutely hold devs to a higher standard. They are professionals. They should not be going out of their way to argue and antagonize people, especially because some of them are like 12 years old. Like, what are you doing if you're like a 30 year old dev literally getting super mad at like some 10 year old? He's like, oh, you nerfed my gun. Of course, he's not gonna be able to articulate his position very well. If you're 25 or 35 or 50, that's another discussion entirely and you might need some help there. <laughs> but yeah, if the devs are ranting or trolling and there was an element of that a couple of days ago, just because they received some calm, legitimate criticism, obviously that is not okay. But despite the memes surrounding Fat Shark, Hedge, Pearl Clutching with Sister Septicemia, all that stuff if you followed Dark Tide in the past, sometimes, the developers are absolutely right. Sometimes the player base is clutching pearls and making mountains out of molehills. Happens all the time. People can get real nasty. Gamers especially are sometimes big time Karens that do lack patience, perspective, or any understanding of the dev process whatsoever. So sometimes I do feel for the community managers and developers who have to cop all this abuse, basically had one bad day, maybe even just like a bad 15 minutes and then they get raked over the coals and memed on for years while all the context gets ignored. That kind of stuff bothers me. I don't want to see threads about Hedge two years later. That's insane. The punishment does not fit the crime there. And it doesn't excuse stupid responses. It doesn't mean it's okay for Arrowhead or Fat Shark or Creative Assembly to go out of their way to fight players, get snippy with them, what have you. Man, sometimes you just gotta let it go. It's not that big a deal. Again, reasoned, calm critique, very good. What are the best ways you can help improve a game? Insulting and personally attacking devs and community managers, very bad. Don't be that guy. So yeah, with all that out of the way, we can focus on specific builds and strats moving forward and continue having fun with what has been an extremely pleasant surprise despite all its flaws. And Helldivers 2 is a flawed game. Do not doubt that for a second. It is far from perfect. It's gonna need a lot of work moving forward, but Man, it is hella fun. It is great Arrowhead are doing a solid job shepherding it, and I hope it will continue to grow and thrive moving forward, because it is really special.